Good afternoon and welcome to the third and last series of our Community Engagement and Environmental Sustainability webinars. My name is Shanti Kosa and you are welcome to today's session. We will first start off with a video by the 2018 Community Engagement Counselor, Ms. Unati Mabugana, who is a Rhodes University Social Sciences Honours graduate and has recently obtained her third qualification, a postgraduate diploma in Enterprise Management at the Rhodes Business School. During her five years at Rhodes University, but Unati has served in various student governance structures. She served as a House Committee member and then a sub warden in 2017 at her former residence, Ellen Kuzayo House. Her most notable positions and achievements stem from her involvement in community engagement space where she volunteered at the Gadra Education for her entire varsity career, first as a tutor and then as a student leader as part of the nine turns mentoring program. Seeing the value of educational support, Unati was also a psychology one tutor in 2017, then a student assistant at DSG in 2018. She was the 2018 SOC Community Engagement Counselor and then later Secretary General and also became the interim ES ECP Volunteerism Coordinator in 2019. Unati has received numerous awards for her community engagement and student leadership. She was in the top 10 volunteers of the year for 2017 and 2018 and was also awarded the VC's Long Service Award in 2018. She received three Inverse Tech Rhodes Awards in 2018 for student leadership, community engagement and general excellence and then received student leadership award again in 2019. She is currently working in Johannesburg at the Nelson Mandela Children's Fund as part of the youth leadership program team where she gets to continue doing what she is most passionate about and which is according to her serving the youth of South Africa. Ladies and gentlemen and those who do not confirm enjoy the video. Hi everyone I hope you're well despite the year we're having and I'd like to thank the SRC for an opportunity to address you all today. Now I'll keep this short because I'm not much of a speaker and also because I learned from volunteering that actions speak louder than words. Reflecting on volunteering as a student, I would say I learned a great deal, especially the importance of time and time management because you did not want to be late for that roost bus. I also learned how to engage with diverse groups of people and also working with people from different walks of life towards one common goal. And I would say now, not being a student, not being in my hometown, not being in my home province, that things have changed a bit. But I have found ways of staying engaged due to the work that I now do, as I have been fortunate enough to be a part of the Nelson Mandela Children's Fund for almost a year now. And here I get to serve and work with the youth. And I believe that it was through student volunteering where I found my passion, which is youth development, as well as fostering leadership within young people due to the leadership crisis that we experience in South Africa. And I would say that other life lessons that I got from volunteering, which have been useful in this phase of my life, have been the ability to be resilient, which I learned from the different people that I served with, as well as just being able to set goals which are realistic, goals which are measurable, and goals which you can evaluate at the end of the day to see how far you have made it. This is especially important as now I am a young professional, so they say, and yeah, I'm no longer in university in an environment where we are a bit protected, and yeah, there's no rules basically now, and with this ability, I believe that I can achieve more than I have already. And it's all thanks to volunteering. And I believe that also as a small town girl, I am able to stay grounded within a cosmopolitan that I now find myself in, as well as remembering that because of how close knit my community is back home. And this is the reason why I know that no matter how far I climb, it is also my responsibility to lift those who will be coming after me. It is not just my responsibility, but it is also my duty because you do not succeed if the other person does not succeed. This notion 
of an individual not succeeding until the whole group does, as well as understanding that the cause is more important than individual interests is something that I'm really grateful for having learned during the days when I was volunteering as a student. And I believe that it is something that will carry me through my life purpose, which I believe is serving others. And I know that I was fortunate enough to have gone to Rhodes University, a university where community engagement is one of the core pillars, because this is not something that's prioritized in other institutions, which is a shame, I guess, because there are so many benefits, especially for after university, once you have gone through community engagement. I definitely miss my days as a student volunteer, because now, you don't have the luxury of going to Roost to find out where you can volunteer, what you can do, or who you can do it with. And it's been a bit of a mission also this year because I know I was planning on volunteering at Igamva Youth, which is also an organization that Rhodes also works with, but this wasn't able to happen because of the pandemic we're currently under. Now, I also think that going forward, when I can volunteer again, I'll definitely take the chance as it is a great opportunity for learning, especially for learning that we do not exist in a vacuum. There are people, there are communities out there who need our help as well as for us, our own personal development. There's so much that we can learn from other people as well as their lived experiences. And I would urge anyone who has considered being a student volunteer to definitely do it because there's so much to gain about yourself and also about those around you. Thank you. And I hope you enjoyed the video. That was Unati Mabugana, who was the SRC 2018 Community Engagement Councillor. And now to continue this conversation, and just to introduce the people I'm with here, we will start off with Lukanyiso Tezula, who is currently doing his third year um, in Bachelor of Arts degree right here at Rhodes University. He was born and bred in Port Elizabeth, Ebayi as the eldest of two children. His family keeps him grounded because he is reminded of the work that he still needs to do. He is passionate about education, mental health, and youth empowerment. A motto that he says he lives by is to go to bed with dreams, wake up with a purpose. And that is actually a very inspirational um, you know, quote that I'd actually like us to engage further after I'm done with the bio. And um, he says, to wake up with purpose means to do something about your dreams, have a plan in place for the day, and use every minute you can to become that better person. He is currently serving as a sub warden, Rose University Marimba Society chairperson, Alan Gray Orbis Foundation candidate fellow, student leader at Ikamva Youth Tutoring, and as a delegate of the Rose University Board of Residences. He has been awarded with the prestigious Rhodes Inversec Top 100 Award for Excellence in Community Engagement, a Gold Award recipient for Outstanding Contribution to Community Engagement and Outstanding Contribution to Community Engagement in Lillian Goyi Hall, to just name a few. And he says his respect, humility, and love under for people underpin all the interactions he has with people. There is much work that needs to be done and through collaborative effort, there is nothing we cannot achieve. Hi, Luca Nyiso, and um, I have to say that I really enjoyed um, reading your bio and you've been quite involved. Congratulations on your achievements. Can you just tell us a bit about your community engagement um, journey and how you plan to use that beyond Rhodes University? Thank you so much for the lovely introduction there. Um, so my journey with community engagement didn't necessarily start here at Rhodes University. Um, I think community engagement starts at home. You know, you, you need to make sure that the people that are around you in your immediate capacity first, you engage those people first. 
Um, and also, when I was in high school, I was involved in lots of different initiatives, you know, Teenagers Against Drug Abuse, AIDS Caring Committee, mm. and Protecting Animals Worldwide, to name a few. Um, so I wanted to continue that when I arrived at Rose University. Um, so literally from the first day I got here, um, a friend of mine actually just told me that there's this site called the Gamba Youth. Okay. Um, and that person is Manlake Valela. Um, <laughs> and he said, but no, I definitely think that you'd be a great fit here. Um, and I've been here for three years with the Gamba Youth and they are my family now. So that's where <laughs> my, my community engagement journey at Rhodes started. But um, throughout the past three years, I've been involved with um, Fikizola Primary School. I've worked with Assumption Development Center through, you know, initiatives with society, um, community engagement work. Um, so my community engagement journey thus far has really been shaped through those interactions with those people thus far here at Rhodes. Oh, okay. Amazing. And one thing I said I'd like us to discuss is the motto, um, your motto, where you say you live, um, the motto that you live by is to go to bed with dreams and wake up with a purpose. Can you please tell us a bit more about that? Not a problem. Um, so I think it's important that as much as we have goals that we'd like to achieve, um, <laughs> you know, we're all big dreamers, we're all ambitious. <coughs> Um, but I think it's also important that when you want to achieve that goal, you have a plan of how you're going to get there. Mm -hmm. So, for example, last year I ran a toiletry drive through the Marimba Society. Um, and it was a very ambitious goal because I wanted to collect uh, 50 goodie bags to go and donate to Figuizola Primary School. Um, and I thought that was going to be a very unattainable goal, you know. But I think I tried to, to make sure that I plan first. Um, and look at which partnerships I can draw on to mm -hmm. make sure that we achieve that goal. So have the purpose, mm -hmm. um, but also have the, the plan to actually achieve that purpose. So, yeah. Oh, amazing. Um, so now how can students, um, you know, how, how do you do it? You've been involved in quite a lot of community engagement activities. And you know how people say that community engagement shouldn't be more about um, donating to the community or just you know working with charity organizations so how would you say community engagement is in your own words um, community engagement I think I've learned a lot personally through my engaged activities um, so much growth not only as a student but also but also as as a leader as well um, I think it's important that we we look at that you know mutualistic relationship that community mm -hmm. engagement is about because it's a give and take, you know. Mm. Um, for example, I've learned to be more patient through working with high school learners at the Gamba Youth. Um, I've learned to, to be a more critical thinker, you know, and just to, to really understand social issues through, through community engagement. So um, I think it's definitely that quote that, that the community engagement office stands by, which is, you know, if you've come here to help me, then you're wasting your time. Mm -hmm. But if you've come here because you're you know, struggle is tied up with mine, then mm -hmm. let's work together. And that's what I feel underpins community engagement at its core. And so how has that grown you as a person? I think it's important to understand that, you know, you're not just pouring out. You're not mm -hmm. just, you know, there to, to do charity work. Um, it's, it's, it's important to also engage in initiatives like skills development programs. For example, last year at Ikamwa Youth, we ran a program where we were helping the high school learners to um, write CVs and emails and teaching them already how to be young professionals mm -hmm. and consider themselves as individuals and people who are future change agents. So I think it's important that we engage in those activities where you equip people with skills mm -hmm. instead of giving them material things. Um, you know, and that's what community engagement is about. That is the true core of what it's about. Okay, thank you so much. You know, community engagement is um, a very broad um, topic and there are various things that you can do to get involved. So with you specifically, how would you say you identified what you would be interested in pursuing through community engagement? Like you mentioned tutoring, you know, people can work with old age homes, with early childhood development centers. How did you identify that specific goal that you pursued in community engagement? Um, I think it's important to have a lot of introspection um, to also figure out what type of person you are. If you're going to be someone who's impatient, obviously you're not going to be working well with, at an early childhood development center, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so I think there's a lot of introspection first and also just making sure that you look through all the programs that, you know, Roos has, um, the Engage Citizen Program, Bulindela, Parent Engagement Program. Mm -hmm. There's so many different programs that Roos has. So I think I definitely encourage people to go out there and find out more about these programs and you'll definitely find something that you will definitely love. 
Okay, thank you so much, Luca Nyuso. And I'm just interested in knowing, this is just for me, um, how have you been, you know, continuing with your community engagement work um, during this COVID-19 pandemic? All right. Um, so for Ikamba Youth, um, we had to shift our focus and, you know, conduct tutoring sessions online. Mm -hmm. So we opened a WhatsApp group where the learners could ask questions and we engage there. And we have um, lots of tutors now that we've recruited even now during this period to, to help us um, assist the learners with the upcoming exams. So that's what we've done to adjust our focus. I think mm -hmm. it's very important that, you know, in times like these, we, mm -hmm. we are adaptable. You know, we, we adjust our approach. Um, for example, even with the, the work that was done by the community engagement division, to, to raise, um, to, to make 1,000 face masks. Yes, yes, That was yes. through collaborative effort, and that was looking at the current situation and coming up with contextually re re relevant solutions mm -hmm. to ensure that they provide the best response to the current pandemic, so yeah. All right, so what other projects are you currently involved in? So currently I am working with um, the Gamba Youth as well mm -hmm. um, to, to try and help the learners to integrate into, into the Rhodes University space. Mm -hmm. um, I've worked with the Sikizola Primary School as well. We're trying to, to get the learners there to be part of the Marimba program. Um, and also we're working with um, Assumption Development Center to help the learners there work, um, read for meaning. So those are other projects that I am involved in, yes. All right, and as you can see, it's not just the two of us here today. We have the SRC 2020 Environmental Counselor, Miss Potoma Balintulo. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Dintanti. How are you? I'm good, thank you, Shantel. I'm well, thank you. And just to introduce her, Putuma completed her BSc in Environmental Sciences and Geology. And she also holds an honors in environmental sciences and is now a master's candidate in environmental sciences focusing on restoration ecology with Rhodes um, Restoration Research Group. She's a co-researcher for the South African Rurality in Higher Education 2018 and 2019. And she co-published a book with the University of Brighton, HPW Plantier Alumni, Access HPW Co-Lecturer and Green Meta fellow and I believe those are some of the things that you you know you've been involved in she has also served as a subordinate so I have two subordinates with me here <laughs> for Dingerman's house in 2019 she is the Miss Earth South Africa 2020 semi-finalist and most importantly um, she is the SRC environmental counselor yes, Shanti, thank you very much for having me today so how can you contribute to the topic that we're discussing on environmental sustainability? We, you know, we heard about community engagement and how it's been continuing to be sustained throughout um, COVID-19. What would you like to add on to the conversation now on the environmental aspect? Um, i just like to say that um, environmental issues have been um, happening before COVID-19 and they will continue happening um, after COVID-19. So we need to have strategies or adaptive management um, that continue beyond COVID-19 because honestly, we cannot have um, a fully functional society when we're still faced with global pandemics such as global warming, climate change. Mm -hmm. um, if you talk in terms of pollution also, those are the things we need to constantly um, keep in conversations with because um, they, if not attended to, we are hindering societal development, we are hindering economic development. So we cannot stay silent um, um, with things that continue, that contribute to the environmental health. So during COVID, we have seen positive things, um, responses from the environment. For example, the ozone layer was healing. Um, we've seen decreases in carbon mm -hmm. emissions because of the restricted movement. But um, the, the, the magnitude of those impacts are so small that if we can't sustain them beyond COVID-19, mm -hmm. we will still continue living in a very threatened and um, compromised environment. All right, um, thank you so much. And I think um, this is a question that you've probably answered before. Mm -hmm. Like, how do you think COVID-19, you know, has affected the environment? Um, it, it has had its good impacts and it has had its negative impacts. Um, talking of the good first, um, um, as I mentioned, with restricted movement, there's less um, carbon emissions and other greenhouse gases. Mm -hmm. And also, you know how most companies have closed down. So their emissions um, of the greenhouse gases has decreased and that has led to a cleaner air. 
and the clean air also contributes to um, how sustainable the plants and ocean life can be because mm -hmm. you understand how if we continue producing over producing we are increasing the global temperatures which um, affect um, the ice caps and mm -hmm. the ocean life and everything like that so there's been a positive green light um, in response to that mm -hmm. however um, as much as the earth systems has this positive feedback, there's like the most threat to our environment is humans. And with that being said, um, with COVID-19, there's been an increase in the use of plastic. Mm -hmm. because you know how people were panic buying and everything like that in the beginning of lockdown. So all those things, because me, most um, recycling um, treatments have been closed down. So there's been nothing that's been done with the pollution that's been emitted by people in their homes. So with that also comes um, medical waste, because um, most of the things that we have to use during COVID, we have to use them once. To, con like to ensure continued um, hygiene and everything. Mm -hmm. So medical waste contributes a lot to environmental degradation during COVID, um, as we have seen how the, the, the single-use um, gloves that um, the medical doctors are using, um, the single-use mask, they end up in the ocean as they've been detrimental to ocean life. Mm -hmm. And what I can say is that um, to people, the best thing we can do for now, especially that COVID is coming to an end, hopefully, is just continue using... Um, your, 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 your cloth or environmentally friendly face mask. Mm -hmm. And instead of using the gloves, people should start using rather the sanitizers. Oh, okay. Thank you. And just to remind you that we are live on the Roads SRC Facebook page. And if you'd like to interact with us today and to interact with my guests, Putuma and Lukanyiso, you can comment on the comment section and I'll be sure to read your comments and to answer any questions that you might have. Now, Putuma, we understand that you are the current SRC Environmental Counselor, and your role includes working on um, a lot of projects on campus because your portfolio is mainly project-based. But we have seen you working beyond campus. I think you even had a project, you know, for your birthday where you <laughs> celebrated your birthday by going outside campus now to plant trees. So especially now during the pandemic, you've been involved in quite a lot of projects. Can you please just tell us about the projects that you did um, with the people in and around Makanda? Okay, thank you very much. Um, starting with the one you just mentioned about my birthday, it was actually um, supported by the SRC, I yes, must yes. give the credit. Okay. Um, we went out to plant trees because my birthday falls during the upper week. So mm. Arbor Week is dedicated to planting trees also um, in conjunction to trying to keep the air clean because you know how trees take in carbon So you dioxide. were born to be an environmentalist. <laughs> <laughs> I can say that. So we went to plant trees with um, Gladys William Preschool, which is um, run by Mr. Aldo Meyer here in the location. Mm -hmm. So what we did then, we like, had a brief session in the beginning with the kids, making them understand the importance of planting trees, why mm -hmm. we should do it, and how we should do it, because we understand that Grahamstown is a water scarce area, so mm -hmm. one thing you don't want to do is to plant a tree that will um, continue adding stress into the environment and to water um, availability in town. So we did that on the 7th of September, okay. and then also went um, on the, the cleanup sessions with Makana Plastic Action Group. Mm -hmm. We did this in July, throughout July, because um, July we're celebrating Plastic Free July in terms mm -hmm. of trying to reduce pollution and stop waste. So we worked with MPAG. We cleaned around um, the few streams in Vuga, Vugani location. Mm -hmm. Yes, we also cleaned around the spring area because obviously I work with roads most of the time. So that's where most of the road student population get their water, especially okay. opinions. And then in so also in terms of river health, I worked with an initiative also here in Grahamstown um, during the month of August, and we're still doing it now. Um, it's called River Rescue. And for that one, I think the main thing that made me join them is, okay, number one, because of language barrier, they needed someone that can speak Isikosa and someone that's into environmental um, protection. Mm -hmm. So in that one, we're teaching small kids from Vugani um, about river health and how about to protect our water sources and things like that. Um, so those are the things I've worked with. And lastly, I worked with the Makana Outreach okay. um, because we understand some people are closed down without food and anything like that. So in that one, I collaborated also with a student from Rhodes University, Sweetness Mgobozi, where we collected parcels that we then donated to a soup kitchen with um, Makana Outreach.
All right, thank you so much. I hear it's been very, very busy. Now, I'd like to pose a question to both of you, but I'd like Luca okay. and Niso to, you know, answer it first. How has studying at Rhodes University shaped your passion and leadership, um, your passion for leadership and community engagement? All right, thank you so much for the question. Okay. Um, how has it shaped my passion for leadership? I think being at Rhodes has really exposed me to a lot of different opportunities, which I would not have had if I were at a different institution. Um, I think here we have a sense of, of family. I think it's, 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 that's the one thing that I really appreciate about being a Rhodes University student, and even in the, the capacities and the spaces that I've occupied here at Rhodes. Um, it's always been about collaboration, it's always been about family, it's always been about helping each other. Um, and I think also, as a leader here at Rose University, one of the most important things that we must do is that our initiatives must be sustainable. Um, so I think that's one thing that's really helped me to, 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 to stay passionate about community engagement is the fact that you know, everything that I do must have a sustainable impact. So that's what keeps me going and that's what I'm passionate about. All right, thank you. And now over to you, ma'am. How has studying at Rhodes um, shaped your passion for leadership and environmentalism? Um, what I've come to understand is that Rhodes is where leaders learn, as they always say it. And passion for leadership for me started back in first year in all week when mm -hmm. um, you see how the SRC would introduce themselves. I was like, I want to see myself there one day. And that's where my leadership um, passion started. And also in residences, you know how you have your house calm and in, in classes you have your class reps. So there's been a lot of opportunities for one to actually engage on as a leader. And then in terms of now taking it towards environmentalism is it actually started before Rhodes, okay. and then when I go to Rhodes, Rhodes um, granted me the platforms to start on acting on towards environmentalism, to start being engaged and being active. And in doing so, I remember how um, in our second year, in environmental sciences, we had field trips. And most mm. of the field trips um, revolved around Grahamstown. So we would go around assessing the health of the environment and conservation around Grahamstown. I remember what um, interested me the most is the other time we went to the village, and then we saw this couple of dogs playing, and they were not in a good state at that moment. And then just thinking about how you can make those dogs um, have a I don't know if I want to say a beautiful life, but a healthy life. So it all started there. I remember that was Geography 102. And then from then, we started engaging in many um, other different programs in our, in our department as environmental sciences because the cleanup session started in my department. We would go clean the spring, and then we'd go around um, cleaning even outside Grahamstown in Port Alfred, like beach cleanups and things like that. Mm -hmm. So that way it all started, and then it went like beyond roads from there. Okay, so I see that when you, and this is for both of you, when you came to Rhodes, you had already started something, you know, where you were coming from, you were already part of those um, programs, and then when you got to Rhodes, then they also granted you an opportunity to continue doing what you love the most. Now, I'd like to know, um, starting with you um, again, <laughs> are there any organizations beyond Rhodes or Makanda that you have worked with? in terms of community engagement. I know that you mentioned um, Ikamba Youth, but that is still you know, tied to, to Rhodes University through the Rhodes University Community Engagement Office. Can you just tell us about briefly about the organizations outside Rhodes that you've been part of? All right, um, so outside of Rhodes, there's also Masifunde Learner Development in Port Elizabeth, okay. which is a youth-based organization um, in, focused on various activities <laughs> debating and acting and just equipping youth with skills to, to you know, better their lives and just keep them away from the, the social ills which are so prevalent in our communities. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one that I've been involved with quite extensively since 2016 uh, as part of the debate team and I was also the debate captain um, coaching um, the learners from mm -hmm. um, Quintal 1 to 3 schools um, for okay. three years. So yeah, that's something else that I've been with, involved with outside of Rhodes. All right, and now over to you. Obviously, then focusing on um, environmentalism. Um, outside roads, I've done 
quite a few. Um, I'd like to just start with Nisei South Africa because it's also actually a platform that allows us to um, engage um, environmentally and also in community engagement. It links very well because in the projects that we do, we are advised to do them with um, schools so that we get children active in that. And also, um, as you mentioned earlier, I am the alumni for the HPW Planeteers, which also looks at the earth system sciences and how um, humans are causing climate change, and most importantly, coming up with solutions that we can help um, um, curb um, climate change and all the things that lead to that, especially in the anthropogenic effects of climate change. Um, in that, it's been it's been a great. Um, journey with them because you need you get to understand the need for for taking care of the environment you get to understand why um, and how people can get involved and through their projects i've been um, working with different schools in and around eastern cape and mostly in cape town most of the times but they also do it um, in places such as limpopo because you know that's a bio biologically diverse area so mm. we've been working there oh interesting especially the part about Limpopo. <laughs> uh, now to you again, Putuma, how can we merge? Um, I think this actually applies to both of you. How can we merge community engagement with environmentalism to address food insecurity, to address the food, the food insecurity issue in our country? Oh, that's a very good question. Um, one thing we need to understand first is that um, when it comes to food security or food in general, there's mm -hmm. no other way or other place that we get the food besides the environment. Okay. So if we start taking off the environment, if we start taking off the soil, there's uh, there's actually a quote that I like that says, love the land that feeds you. Mm -hmm. um, so that means we need to work on the land so that it can produce food. And um, one of the things I actually worked on during lockdown was um, addressing food security. And in doing so with community engagement, like how Kazula was mentioning, that you don't need to help a person, but you need to give them the resources and the skills mm -hmm. so that they'd be able to do it themselves. So what we actually did was we went for Mandela Day. Instead of giving out food parcels to people, we gave people um, skills where they can grow their own food. You understand? Mm -hmm. So like, um, it can start as like... Um, small vegetable gardens in your own household and then you, you expand it to a community-based thing where society or communities come together and do it. Yes? All right, I actually have a comment here, and uh, it says uh, to Putuma, well done, Sisi. You're doing a great job, and it's great to see that you live what you preach, literally, every day. And then to Tazula, well done on your continued work in community engagement. It is really inspiring, and the spirit of continuity is admirable. Thank you. Thank you so much. And, you know, just to remind you that if you'd like to be part of the conversation, whether through a comment or to ask us any question, you can reach us um, on our Facebook page where we are currently live. And that is the Rhodes SRC page. And that's where, you know, I can be happy to have our guests here to answer some of the questions and to read out your comments because we actually do appreciate hearing from you and getting your feedback on the session that we are having. So uh, my next question to you, Putuma. Um, you have emphasized how humans are the biggest drivers of environmental decay. Okay. So we are the problem, Very much in so. short. Very much so. <laughs> so how can people, and the youth in particular, because you know um, we are addressing the youth, how can they help or be actively involved in efforts to conserve the environment? Okay, thank you. Um, the environment is quite complex and complicated in doing mm -hmm. so. So people need to start small. You don't have to um, be too ambitious and say, I want to help stop climate change. I want to, st I want to help stop pollution. It's, it's beyond that. You just need to start small. For example, just um, identify one thing that you think you like. Understanding um, people also is that I may love animals. Um, mm -hmm. Luca Nyuso may love um, um, the water and you may love plants. So you need to focus on what you love most and start with that. For example, if Luca Nyuso loves plants, you can start by working the soil and then find um, organizations around that work with that 
try do your research see what's in your local area what are people working on what is the main um, environmental problem in your area for example Gramstown, we know that the most devastating issue is plastic waste and mm -hmm. pollution and second to that is water so in a Gramstown context it would be advisable if the youth would start um, forming campaigns that work towards um, pollution reduction um, campaigns that work with water because you don't as much as um, the earth is an open system meaning mm -hmm. that one problem that is facing Grahamstown could possibly be faced by this by the people at Pedi or in other neighboring towns but you need to start with something that's attainable so you can't dream big you understand so set your goals know what you want to do see if it's achievable and once you know it's achievable find people that can help you do that and once you get those people then you can move your project forward and also do not be afraid to be the beginning of something mm -hmm. because most of the people people wait for someone to do it mm -hmm. you see something wrong like now nah, the municipality will do it now nah, a certain person will do it don't be afraid to start it by yourself there's what calls inter called um, environmental entrepreneurs so you can mm -hmm. start something like that next thing you can you have your own recycling plants and you the whole Gramstown is your customers and you're making money and you're living out of it mm -hmm. so people should just get up and do it I like the part where you say um, you shouldn't wait for someone you know to start something you can be the innovator and that brings me to the question that I wanted to ask you which is both of you by the way now, what is your advice to someone who might think that the world has just so many problems mm -hmm. we can't solve, you know, and the, whatever they do won't, you know, help in the bigger picture? What would be your advice to that person? I, I'd, I'd say to that person, um, think about how sometimes we have so much problems that mm. we don't see a solution. So wherever there's a problem, you need to know that there is a solution to that problem. So your responsibility then would be finding ways to curb that in your own capacity, understanding your own resources, because most of the problems um, aren't solvable because of limited resources. So know what resources you have and how to utilize them. And in doing so, just start small. You don't mm -hmm. have to go big, start small, and you don't know how much your small efforts mean to the environment. All right, thank you. And I think also just adding on to what Putuma said, um, yeah. it's very important to just do what you can in your own personal mm -hmm. space. Um, I think it's very important that, you know, you, you, you find something that you're really passionate about um, and just work on that, you know. And I think there's so many, you know, feel-good stories or positive stories mm -hmm. that have come out of this COVID pandemic, mm -hmm. for example, back to the 1,000 masks which are raised mm -hmm. for early childhood development centers um, and so many different projects which are working and being you know, implemented now during this um, COVID-19 pandemic. So definitely people are, are looking at what they can do now already mm -hmm. and not focusing on everything that's wrong. I think it's also yeah. important to, to remind yourself mm -hmm. of the good of humanity, that mm -hmm. there are people who really do want to enact change. So definitely. So basically just doing what you can. Do what you can. And we do have, our, uh, we do have a comment on our Facebook Live from Yenzi Wembuyisa saying, very awesome work, Lukanyi. So what are the biggest lessons you've learned during your volunteering efforts? I think one of the biggest lessons is um, set realistic goals. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think when we come into this space and we get involved in community engagement activities, you know, we want to change the whole world and just do a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's important to just sit down and look what resources you have, um, the partnerships which you can draw on, and also is this something which is feasible? So I think those are three things which I really did like to, 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 to highlight there with what I've learned in community engagement thus far. All right, and another question from Yenziwe Mbuyisa again. Thank you so much, Yenziwe, for engaging with us. Do you think the university, which is Rhodes, is doing enough towards environmental sustainability? And that is campus culture, infrastructure, awareness, and activism. And I think this is directed to you, Putuma. That's a very interesting question, especially coming to an environmental counselor. And my honest response to that is no. The university is definitely not doing enough. Um, we have so much um, waste generated by the university. First, um, we're talking about paper waste. We have, mm -hmm. I think, six faculties with many departments, and you get um, in the department by the printing machine, there's so much paper. And I don't understand 
why is it roads not doing something about mm -hmm. that because um we are, like it's, it's 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 a huge impact knowing where papers come from it comes from trees which leads to deforestation if we have deforestation that means the carbon dioxide is just lingering around the streets because we don't have enough carbon sequestrators in the air and that's number one and secondly um, Rhodes is like a residence university. We have four and dining halls. Mm -hmm. You would be surprised how much With more than fifty residences. Kabangamta yes. as mm. students apa. You'd be so so surprised how much food is being wasted. And you think about the cost of producing the food, the mm -hmm. environmental cost of producing Which that food. Which links to the food security issue that we're talking about. Yes, on. and then from then um, also that that that's a potential for compost for example, and then that compost could be used um, by, nearing, uh, by nearby farmers um, um, that produced food, or, are, or actually student societies like um, mm. Common Ground that has a garden, that, that food from the dining halls could be taken to them as compost. Um, also, when you come into plastic, again, um, roads is not doing enough in terms of that. Actually, I think for that it would be much onto the students, um, not um, doing enough, but again, students can't do something if they don't have um, the push from the university. When I say that, I mean um, you should have enough bins in residences that actually stated this is um, for, for, for plastic, this is for glass, this is for paper, so that people learn how to um, recycle waste and separate waste from the source. So if Rhodes University can just do that a bit, it will, it will be good. And also, lastly, I would like to mention um, how Rhodes University is such one small campus and yet um, the lecturers and the staff and some students are using cars. Imagine taking a car from Robert Sobukwe to Eden Grove, the amount of pollution okay. you are emitting in that. So if Rhodes maybe could invest in maybe cycling tracks so people can actually exercise, it's also good for your health and it's good for your body. So we had it, those who have cars. Also, Gramstown itself is a very small, small town. town. You, walk you can, to pick and pay. You know, you, you can know. walk from one point of Makanda to the other point. <laughs> so there's absolutely no need for people to be driving. No need. <laughs> and I have a question here, uh, a comment rather, saying it's great to see young people being involved in community engagement as Lukanyiso is. I like the fact that he mentioned that community engagement should not only be about giving material things, but also about equipping yeah. people with important skills. And thank you so much, um, you know, for the inspiration. And that is the comment that we received. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So we are doing great. Yeah. So now, um, for you, Putuma, both of you actually, I would just like to know if resources were not a factor. Let's say you had enough money in the world to address some of the environmental and community engagement challenges that you have, what would you do? Um, we'll start with you. All right, not a problem. I think something that I'm very passionate about is uh, access to, to, to opportunities in education. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm l looking at our education system here in South Africa, there's so much inequality. Mm -hmm. um, let's look at here in Makanda. Um, there are so many schools which have world-class resources right here on our doorstep. Mm -hmm. But if you go deeper into the Joza community and you see just the disparity between those two, I think it's important that we need to make sure that all schools have the same sort of resources. So that's one thing that I definitely work towards, you know, and also access to opportunities like scholarships, mm -hmm. bursaries, um, and, and all of that, and promote that across all schools and not just limited to, you know, those schools which can actually you have those resources, so it's definitely something like that. All right. Um, I think I'd split my money into two. Um, first of all, I'd focus on cities um, into increasing their green spaces. We understand how much cities emit pollution, so they need um, green spaces for that. So I'd work on that firstly. And then secondly, I think I'd invest that money into rural development because I understand how um, rural spaces have so much land that has so much potential that could be feeding the nation, that could be um, contributing towards the sustainability of the planet in terms of economics, in terms of community engagement, also in just in terms of environmental in general. So so I'd invest in that, try to rehabilitate, because I'm so, uh, I love rehabilitation of the land so much. So I'd invest in rehabilitating those lands in rural areas just to um, ensure continued support from like getting ecosystem services um, from, from, from the land. And in doing so, we're going to be sustaining human livelihoods. 
All right, thank you so much. And that draws us to the end of our webinar today with Putuma and Lukanyiso. And like I said, this is the last uh, day of the webinar for community engagement and environmental sustainability. And we were coming to you live from Steve Biko Building on the Roads SRC page. Also, do reach out to us on our social media platforms at um, Roads SRC on Twitter, RU SRC on Instagram, and Roads SRC Group on Facebook. You can engage with us there. And also, just to remind you that SRC elections are currently mm. open, nominations are open. So, if you'd like to run for SRC and to be part of the amazing work that the SRC continues to do on campus, you can, you know, run for any portfolio that you are interested in and you can submit your nomination to the IEB. From myself, Shantikosa, as the SRC Secretary General, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. We will have a close video coming up now to wrap up the webinar. Thank you. And I am the SRC Community Engagement Counselor. Let me start off by saying that thank you all for joining us in our three-day webinar series. It has truly been so exceptional, so insightful and so informational and we hope that this platform has allowed us to be able to delve deeper into the issues around community engagement and environmentalism to continue to be agents of social change and environmental sustainability we have seen that through our shared humanity through collaborative work that we can be able to still continue with what is most important in our society and that is continuously driving social justice and social change. With that being said, I'd like to extend my most gratitude to um, Rhodes University Community Engagement, Roos, for being a part of this webinar, for continuously supporting the SRC in all of our um, community engagement initiative. Per On the second day, I'd also like to thank the Council of 2020, the Rhodes SRC, for your continued support and um, consistently tuning into our webinar. I'd also like to then thank our guests um, for the community engagement, Ooh, Anna Talbot, Emma Wagner. On the second day, we had Benita Benza, Utandi Mkoana, and on the third day, we had Unati Mabugane and Lukanyi Sokezula. Thank you all so much. And now I will take it over to Madam Environmental. Moloeni Bantase, Ikamalam Dumputma Balintulo. I am the Road SRC Environmental Counselor. And of course, Madam C, these were very, very insightful and they taught us the importance of staying relevant and staying true to our duties and responsibilities as leaders. And as communities, it has taught us that we need to be adaptive and resilient when we are faced with change. If there's anything that COVID has taught me as a leader is that the true test of leadership is how well we function when we are faced with a crisis. We do hope that fellow students and the Makanda community at large has learned a lot um, and you have been motivated to actually get up, be proactive and start playing your part in community and continue being an active catalyst of social change and environmental transformation. Because honestly, things such as global warming, climate change, deforestation, um, plastic pollution, air pollution continue to be pandemics that threaten the environmental sustainability. And with that being said, we need citizens that are committed and that are eco-conscious. We need leaders with sustainability issues in mind. We hope you continue playing your part in preserving and tending to the environment in which we live in. Thank you very much to everyone that's tuned in and I would like to extend our gratitude to our speakers. On the first day, we had Skumbuzo Khadebe and Yenzi Mumbuisa. On the second day, we had Nazia Wadi and Azola Fim. And of course, behind the scenes, we had the great support from Raymond Mujabilo from Rose Music Radio. And last but not least, our trusted student body. Thank you for engaging and thank you for continuing supporting the SRC. 